करते All right, I'll call to order the Tatamad Dessert Planning Board meeting for December 14th, 2022. Greetings out there in online land. <laughs> so we've got uh, planning board members, um, Meredith Randolph and Dave Ashmore online, as well as our recording secretary, Heidi Smallage, and uh, in the C Street um, meeting room, we have myself, Chair William Hanley, and Tracy Loftus Keller. And um, is let me just first check: is CQD the applicant or agent for the um, five Spruce Lane project? Agent is Michael West. Yeah. And uh, while Kyle's uh, texting to the CQD person online. Um, Heidi, what what minutes did we have to approve again? Ah, uh, yes, Tracy's reminding me the November 9th minutes. That's the one. Thanks. So we've got, got those to approve if anybody cares to make a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the meeting minutes of November 9th. Dave Ashmore, second. All right. All those in favor, Meredith? Randolph, aye. Dave? Dave Ashmore, aye. Tracy? Tracy Keller, aye. And myself, we have Hanley, aye. All right. Um, let's first figure out if anybody is here tonight for the first item on the agenda, well, third item on the agenda, um, the five Spruce Road, Northeast Harbor project. And just as the board is aware, the um, fourth item on the agenda, the conditional use approval application for the community school go was uh, taken off the agenda. So um, I'll just preface again the inquiry if anybody is here for the um, item number three, five Spruce Road project, because no one was at the site visit today, either the um, agent or the um, applicant. And if no one's here for this, I think we might be having the shortest um, planning board meeting on record, unless any planning board members um, object to that. Should we maybe wait for yeah. five, 10 minutes or something? Yeah, so we've got the, somebody is online and they're- um, Muted. Yeah, and cut. someone is online, you, if you guys can see that, the CQD, and Kyle's trying to reach out to them through the chat, and he just made his second, yeah, their, his second attempt. Is that Kyle sitting at the table over there? That is Kyle. Hi, Dave. Hi, Kyle. Yeah. How are you? All right. Yeah, Gloria, I guess, is out sick. I didn't hear from Christy, um, but she's officially an um, alternate member now. Hey, Bill, while we're here, you, you can confirm there's no other people in there, right? No one else I, is there. 
yeah, no in, one the, else. Uh, in the room with you? No, I can confirm no one else is in the room with us except Kyle and Tracy. I got them. Thank you. Yep. And it slipped through. That's yeah, it. if you guys got the black ice is everywhere right now. So be careful. So nice to be able to zoom. <laughs> so, that, that, so this is exactly why we still have this option. <laughs> of uh, COVID, right? Yeah. Being able to that virtual meeting. Yeah, I mean. And it's fun to see each other. Mm -hmm. I, I, I can't see us ever giving up Zoom now. You know, yeah. it seems so yeah. ingrained into, in, into everything. I mean, I'm, I would, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I'd rather almost be on Zoom than pick up the phone and call somebody. <laughs> depending upon what the matter is, I guess. But. Well, you can see the person's expression. It's so much better than just a voice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Is there a protocol for time limits? Oh, what was the rule in college? You know, if the professor doesn't show up in 15 minutes, you get to leave. That's usually what I go by. I get the site visit today, no one showed up. Gave it 15 minutes. And it's required they be present. Yeah, they should absolutely be there. I mean, for the application tonight. Yeah, so we have had in the past applications reviewed without. Um, applicants present at site visits, but it's very difficult. And, you know, if it is a... Um... Is Kyle um, texting to the number that's at the bottom of the letter, or...? Um, I'm not. I was just chatting on her Zoom platform. Yeah, there's somebody online, and they're not responding. Right. But there's, a, I guess I was wondering whether yeah, no, that's... trying to get a hold of somebody, the, um, Michael Leslie uh, with the telephone number that's at the bottom of the letter. Yeah, the 917-648-4185 number. Yep. It is very odd that we have somebody participating in the Zoom and we can't figure out who they are. It's kind of creepy. <laughs> it's Big Brother. Yeah, who is that? Do any of you want to try texting that number? I can try calling it or. Yeah. Well, I, or I can text it. I guess I would think a telephone call might be. They might, uh, they might be on their phone. I'll try calling it. Yeah. What is the number? It's not showing up on mine. Well, it's on, it's on the October 7th letter. It's um, a yellow, yeah, from, yellow at the top page. From Mike, Michael Leslie saying he's assisting C.C. Belford on the... And he's listed as the agent. Mm -hmm.
no, there's technically no checklist on that, but the civil commission. Yeah. So in reading this, the waiver is provided here. Where is this? It's pretty all encompassing. Mm -hmm. I have Michael Les Leslie on the telephone and he's going to try to join us by telephone. Fantastic. Thank you, Meredith. So he will call in in a second. He was unaware that anybody needed to attend. He understood all the things he needed to submit, but he did not realize attending the meeting. He thought we would just review it on our own. Mm. Thanks for coordinating that. Yeah, well, hopefully I give him all the numbers correctly. If it doesn't work, he's gonna have to call me back and I'll figure out what number I gave him wrong. <laughs> He was going up the stairs. He was very out of breath. So hopefully he takes a minute and catches his breath or else. Roger that. <laughs> How's everybody feeling? Or seems like half of Hancock County is out sick right now. All good in your house, Meredith? I, I hardly ever see anybody. I can't get sick. <laughs> Excellent policy. I'm, I'm fine, but my wife's been sick for a week. Oh, no. Yeah. Influenza. Oh, Hello. Influenza too. Hello. Uh, is Meredith there? I am. 
There Hi, are. my name is Michael Leslie. <laughs> well, welcome aboard, Michael. This is William Hanley, I'm the chair of the planning board. Oh, nice to meet you this way. <laughs> Good to have um, you here. I'm calling you from uh, New York City, um, and uh, and I have a flip phone, and I'm very very luddite-ish in a way. So uh, this is a great accomplishment for me to Excellent. have gotten through to you guys. <laughs> Hats off to you uh, again. Thanks for joining us, and if you can just bear with us as we kind of um, read just some. Uh, protocol items on the agenda, sure. uh, and then we'll we'll get into the project review. Real okay, quick. great. Do, do you want to just yeah. quickly introduce who the board is, since he doesn't Absolutely. he can't see what he's dealing with? Absolutely. So, <laughs> Michael, there's uh, four of us here tonight. We're two of us in person, two of us online, and we've got uh, you've met Meredith Randolph already. She's online. We've got Dave Ashmore. He's also online. And then we've got Tracy uh, Loftus Keller here in the room with me. Uh, myself, William Hanley, chair. And we've got um, uh, Kyle here helping us out with all the, uh, all the uh, technology. Uh, okay. Got it. Got Thank you all. Yeah. So, have you again uh, just let me read through the agenda and why you guys are here tonight so um, okay great item three on the agenda tonight we have section 4.3 non-conforming structures so 4.37 seven talks about change of use of a non-conforming structure and what that says is that the use of a non-conforming structure may not be changed to another use unless the planning board, after receiving a written application, determines that the new use will have no greater adverse impact than the existing use on A, the subject or adjacent properties and resources, or B, water body, tributary stream, or wetland. And then it goes on further to talk about that. In determining that no greater adverse impact will occur, the planning board shall require written documentation from the applicant regarding the probable effects on public health and safety, erosion and sedimentation, water quality, fish and wildlife habitat, vegetative cover, visual and actual points of public access to water, natural beauty, floodplain management, archeological and historic resources, and commercial fishing and maritime activities and other functionally water dependent uses. And um, tonight we have uh, Cecily Belford, um, the agent is Michael Leslie. The location is Five Spruce Road, Northeast Harbor. It's tax map 25, lot 55. Uh, the zone is village commercial and the purpose is to convert an existing garage into a private art studio. We had a site inspection at three o'clock, and I just have to first check if this one was advertised and a butters notified. And according to the November 24th MDI Islander, uh, it was. And we've got on a list of the butters, but I don't have a date of notification. But let's the butters have been at least identified in the applicant's um, original package. So let's go through it. So um, first off at the site visit, uh, I was the only one there today. It was just a nasty rainy day. Uh, the applicant and the agent were not there. And what I observed is, um, as was and is indicated on the submitted site plan, there's a existing residence and an existing garage. Um, and we're talking about a change of use here. Uh, the existing garage you know, looks like it was in the process of being re-shingled, the, the walls. 
um, as it just had kind of building wrap on it and there was no other observed anything around the garage, no footprint change or other disturbance on the property. And, and it uh, can pretty much confirmed with, um, conformed with uh, the site plan submitted. And with that, Michael, why don't you take it from there and just kind of outline the project for the record, please? Sure. Um, uh, what this is was a, a um, you know, a, a, as you pointed out, a non-compliant building. It had a couple of corners that um, didn't conform and, um, and some uh, rafter tails actually that came off toward the road that were um, in some violation that was before my time and they were trimmed off. So it was a matter of like, you know, a 12 inch breach of some sort. So uh, that was cut off. So that brought it into um, satisfactory compliance uh, for a non-compliant building, I guess you'd say. Um, what we're doing is basically we're just cleaning up a garage that was a little bit down on its heels and um, reaching a, the outside was that L1011 stuff that ha had gone bad and we had some uh, rotten mold on the inside. So we just went ahead and started rebuilding all that, leaving the garage, um, you know, possibility there uh, pending this meeting. Um, but we went ahead with, you know, fixing up the existing structure. There is nothing uh, protruding beyond what you saw what is the existing structure as it was. Um, and the only thing we're really doing is internal uh, and repairs um, to the back side of the roof shingles are bad. And we're also gonna put in some uh, windows um, high, just kind of light, letting in light. Um, and then, uh, um, you know, a new door, insulated door, insulate the walls. They were insulated, but it was all like nice, you know, funky. Um, and that's it. There's, there's really nothing happening in the surrounding area, um, aside from probably installing gutters, which weren't there. Um, uh, but I don't even know if we'll need that. We might do a French drain or something. It doesn't seem to have a drainage problem. Um, and, and that's pretty much it. Got it. So... So essentially we're here again for the change of use and um, it, it seems like the, <laughs> the primary non-conformity, if it was even, you could use the word primary was again, just the pre-existing uh, roof eaves and then the back overhang, but then also you guys have a setback waiver agreement with your abutter to the north uh, the Northeast Harbor Tennis Club, where they nullified the side the side yard setbacks. So I would. Well, that, we, can I just ask? A that's question? a good. I'm sorry that that I, I term it as a good thing, meaning it's okay with us, whatever that was. Yeah. The no, tennis it, club. Yeah, so it is a good thing, and it's you know a long-standing tradition here in the town to be able to do that. And Meredith, you had a question? Well, I'm confused because the applicant isn't the property owner. There's no representation yeah. of the property owner. Who, how's, what's the relationships here? <laughs> yes. Oh, uh, um, uh, Cece Befford is the owner uh, of the house. And she asked me, um, because I, I'm a designer and I do work up there, but also here in New York, uh, to help her um, create an art studio. And my brother is a builder in South East, Southwest Harbor. Um, and so I asked him how I would go about things here. Um, and he said to get in touch with Kim Kane, start there, oh, you know, I, and say I what you want to do. I, I saw all the signatures and, from the previous owners and I, okay, it's right. just, there's only one spot that her name is shown. Right, I don't it's know, but she's the, the, she's the owners. lawful owner. Um, and, uh, and so I did, that's obviously the first thing I did. Um, 
And then I was lucky enough to get a good builder who had a job fall through. So I said, listen, I don't have, you know, any okay on this yet. So let's just keep it a garage, but let's just fix it. Um, and so he's been doing that work waiting for, um, you know, this, uh, meeting, I guess. And then if, if we, if we pass the audition, um, you know, he'll continue on to, you know, insulate and do all the rest of the stuff we were doing inside. Got it. I guess I'll reach out and ask if there's any questions from the public. <laughs> uh, there's, um, Michael, there's no one here in the meeting room <laughs> than yeah, us. But, uh, and however, we have somebody online. There are, pro there, are pro there are protesters outside with placards and stuff saying, <laughs> no more art studios. I haven't seen any pitchforks or torches yet, but um, okay, good. <laughs> I'm relieved. Uh, Chair we, Handley, this is Heidi. Should we um, check for a conflict of interest? Uh, thanks, Heidi. Let me let me do that now. So let me ask if there is any conflict of interest from the board on this application. None heard. Thank so you. I guess we're I'm not hearing any inquiries from the public. We've got one person unidentified online here with us uh, labeled CQD. Uh, we've reached out to them. Um, Kyle's try to get them to respond through chat, but um, no feedback. So. No questions, uh, nothing being heard on this one from the public. I'm gonna go ahead and close public comment then. And uh, let's get into the review of the application. So, you know, where, um, where this one is not a uh, standard conditional use application, really there's, there's no standard format for this other than just what's um, stated through section 437. So our review will have to be kind of cobbled together from the, the, the criteria of that section. And then um, we do have a, um, you know, actually a, a, an application approval sheet to sign if we get that far. So, um, we've confirmed uh, that this one is advertised and the butter's notified. There's no conflict of interest. And um, I say we get right into the review of this. And I'm not really sure if the ab typical application protocol applies, but I'll, how about we just go through the motion and say, um, um, I guess we first need a motion to approve the application. Or let's first have a motion to find that the application is complete. Tracy Keller, I'll make a motion to find the application complete. I guess I'm just not sure. Don't we usually get told, like uh, the second thing being tributaries, uh, usually the application tells us which zone it's in so that we could say, we have been proven that there is not adjacent to any water bodies. Um, I yes. have no idea what the town puts out as what the expectation is for the application. Yeah, so let's uh, let's let's discuss the completeness of the application. So um, I don't know if you guys re remember the last time we had one of these that was over in Seal Harbor, and it was again a garage conversion. And it was next to a stream. It was within the stream, the stream setback there, if you recall. And we had um, a, a, a bit more information submitted with the application. That's um, not only the survey is very helpful, but also identifying any of the review criteria in the proximity of the project too. And you know, going back to or three seven, you know, we talk about public safety and health. Um, we talk about erosion and sedimentation. 
uh, water quality, fish and wildlife habitat, vegetative cover. Like archaeological. Yeah, the resources. yeah the archaeological and historic resources. You know, we've all seen the common submittals on that from the with the um, uh, the mapping submitted. Obviously, it's the anything relative to um, commercial fishing, maritime activities, and water dependent uses is a moot point. They're in the village commercial district. But I think there's Meredith to your point, there are a couple items on there we probably should have before us and on record for the review of the project. Thank you. And uh, maybe if we could, as a board, identify for the applicant what those items should be considered in the um, submission of the application. Um, I think that would be beneficial to the process. It's unfortunate because a lot of it's just information, it seems to me, that Kim Keene usually gives the applicants um, and know, then they I, submit it with the application. So, yeah, it's and Michael, the, these, this is a lot of this is just kind of pro forma submittals that the, the town has on record. And I can say from the board's experience um, for a non conforming project like this, the more information you can. You can submit the stronger the you know the board's finding will stand in over time. And um, for instance, like uh, Tracy was talking about the um, archaeological and historic resources. If you talk to the code enforcement officer, that she can point you directly to uh, a. a online database, mapping database that will, um, just, you can get a, a download of, um, you know, the map for the area around five spruce lane indicating any of the, either of those items. Um, public Could health. I ask a question there? Yeah. Um, I mean, as far as that is concerned, the the original garage is on a slab and we're still on the slab we haven't gone an inch in fact we've gone an inch shy um so you know i think the archaeological thing you know we're not digging any anything around there um but maybe they just need that to know that yeah and it, and remember it's um we're talking about a change of use here, not necessarily anything really to the structure. I mean, the the board doesn't have any purview about your foundation type or you know aesthetics of the structure or anything like that. But just in in past project reviews, you do need something on file, at least at the minimum on that map showing if there are any archaeological or historic, um, um, what's the wording, resources. Possibilities. <laughs> and it's, and, you know, it's, it's, again, it's just a pro forma map that needs to be submitted. Um, things about, things like public health and safety, you know, uh, an, an email from the public works department. Um, you know, you could reach out to the head of the public works department and say, hey, look, you know, can you just give me a email pertaining to if there's any public or health, public health and safety concerns here <laughs> with the change of use of the garage and you know, and I know some of this sounds just, you know, a bit much. <laughs> But again, welcome to our world. And yeah. Yes. Yeah. Can, yes. Can we approve this subject to him providing the, that information to Kim mm -hmm. prior to her issuing a permit? Dave, I would I would think in the context in, of this project that's absolutely feasible, but the board would have to make that determination and 
maybe we do that right now. I you think know. that's a great idea. I, I don't see that. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see that there's anything <laughs> wrong, but, but I don't see that the information for us to say, yes, we know that he's not going to damage any water and we, there are not, there's no bald eagle parked on the roof and you know, there's. Right, other, right. Yeah. And I'm a little worried about the commercial fishing, however, but um, I think it'll be okay. <laughs> Yeah, we, we don't have any members from the public here voicing concern about the project as we did on past projects. Uh, there's no one online expressing any concern. You know, the, you know, if you look at the, um, the site plan and the um, encroachment over the now nullified five yard or five foot setback on the north, north line, yeah, it, it's about as minimum as it gets, you know. Um, right. So I'm, you know, if somebody wants to make a motion to that effect, I think we probably should, and then we can soldier on. So, Bill, that what we what we need is archaeological the archaeological map. I'd say we need the town zone map that also shows where significant streams are. It's the only yeah. thing that I think could surprise us. Meredith, maybe we frame the uh, a potential motion in the context of finding the application complete, so then we can move on with the right. review of it. Or... Oh, but we aren't finding the application complete. That's the problem. <laughs> that's the that's the conundrum. So well, we don't. We We've done that before. They approved a project subject to them providing information. Mm -hmm. Oh, we have I'm not sure how, how we did it, but. Uh, I, guess, we, I guess we say it's complete enough. I don't. Do we say that uh, it's something like it's conditionally complete upon the submittal of these items? Yes, that sounds good. For sure, but we've got to get past the the step of saying it's complete that we found the application complete. Well, we could say state it as simply as look, the planning board finds the application complete pending the submittal yeah. of this, this, and this. I make a motion to find the application complete. Uh, upon the submission of um, a zone map, um, a archaeological map, um, what, what is it, an endangered species map, or their nesting bird concerns and things? Yeah, so we, so, yeah, fish and wild hot. With fish and wildlife habitat, we've got, um, you know, identif just clearly identifying it's not in a floodplain. I think the survey probably covers that, but a, a location map might help. The archaeological and historic resources map. It's you know it's, I, it's not just submitting it it's it's submitting it uh, showing that this is not in a location mm -hmm. where there is uh, eco ecological right so we again just running and planning Mr Leslie the planning board is a lot of repetition so bear with us mm -hmm. so uh, I understand. Well, I was trying to I was trying to put together a motion and list the maps that need to be. Yeah. I think it's mostly just maps and and the to complete the application. Yeah, so they they need a letter from the public works department okay. about public health and safety. They need a erosion and sedimentation control map. That's essentially that could be something simply overlaid on the site plan showing where their silt fence is going. Yeah, but they're any. not doing anything on the outside, so why would they have silt fencing? Well, it, or they're it, not it, disturbing the soil. 
Yeah, well, they, it sounds like they're going to be putting windows in and the door and they, they're they shingling and they cut the eaves off the building. Um, uh, something speaking to um, water quality. That there's no... And, and, and what uh, agency do I ask about that? Have you... I don't think that's necessarily an agency, but maybe um, something in writing attesting to that you're you're not changing any of the established, you know, um, water courses on the property. You're not. Um, I don't know you're you're not. How would we? We we have to review that it's not um, impacting adjacent the subject is adjacent the adjacent properties or adjacent resources so you basically just have to have a letter saying uh the work to be done will not have any impact on surrounding resources yeah that i think not... uh, that that wasn't stated in the application in my my cover letter and that wasn't enough oh. just to say that we're not doing anything outside of the walls of the existing building He stated that he sees no effect on public health, safety, erosion, sedimentation, water quality, fish and wildlife habitat, vegetative cover, visual points of public access to waters, natural beauty, floodplain management, commercial fishing, or any other water dependent uses. I think we just need the maps that prove that. Yeah. Okay. So if you could just uh, tell me which, um, I just where I would apply for those maps uh i would i would contact our code enforcement officer kim king and she'll direct okay. to the resources okay for that. and again it's it's a short pathway to them okay great but i think our motion has to clearly we've we've bounced around a bunch here in making this motion that it will be complete with a um the specific maps are the a town zoning map, and I believe those show you the stream streams, yeah. right? Um, so the town zoning map, a uh, archaeological map, and then uh, aren't there maps that show where there are sensitive bird? Yeah, there's there's a wildlife habitat map. Okay, so and a wildlife habitat map, mm -hmm. okay. along with a letter from the um, town utility uh, saying that uh, this is having no impact on the town utilities. Yeah. Okay. Public works. Public works. What, I'm sorry. What was that last thing? It's it's the public works department. That you're looking for. Okay. Okay. Heidi, have we come up with a motion? Well, <laughs> um, what we have, let me just go back. Um, where the heck is it? Oh, there it is. Uh, Ms. Randolph moved to find the application complete pending submission of, and then we jump forward, a zoning map, archeological map, wildlife habitat map, and a letter from the Department of Public Works regarding impact on town resources. Does that sound like something you wanna use? Yes. Yeah. And we need a second. Dave Ashmore, second. All those in favor, Meredith? Aye. Dave? Dave Ashmore, aye. Tracy? Tracy Keller, aye. And myself, William Hanley. Um, just before I lose the thought, should we, should then we make a motion about the, um, 
the review criteria of section 437 that we don't find applicable given the the address of the property and the zone it's in such as the the uh, water dependent uses is you uh, saying a, a criteria that if if there should be any issue on any of those maps is that what you're saying yeah well they're they're obviously not in the um commercial fishing and maritime activity right zones <laughs> you know they really should not be having to submit anything on that um and the town zoning map will um show that and um and other functionally water dependent uses um and they don't have any concerns about visual and actual points of public access to water again they're based upon the location of, of the property um they same thing you know when you think about the floodplain management too you know the the you know, the projects up in sylvan city and um you know with the submitting of the tax map too we're going to see what the adjacent properties and the surrounding resources are but you know i'd like to think we all know given the location of this that um additional information testimony testifying um uh you know, water dependent impact probably is a little point in this case. I think we're just, we're, we need the proof to say this is not having any impact because it's not in the zone of a uh, body of water, tributary stream or wetlands. So, I mean, the two criteria is if we didn't have this awkwardness, we'd say we are not finding that the change of the use of the structure has any impact on the adjacent properties or resources uh, because mm -hmm. there's nobody here objecting and we have a letter from the tennis club. And then, um, and then we just need the maps uh the the complete the relevant maps that we've asked for to confirm that there's no impact on uh water bodies or any adjacent resources can i ask a question mm -hmm. yeah uh, i'm just curious again if um you know the the structure was there and it got approved and it's in its slight you know not quite right location um and then we you know did this work on it so it's still there it's just nicer you know it's just clean and new shingles and stuff like that um so the you know the water and the ar archaeological and all those things nothing has changed from the original waiver that may they maybe they submitted all those same documents i don't know i'm just I'm curious as to how, uh, if it's just a matter of protocol that we go through all that, um, yeah, the, the maps. It really is because if those were submitted relative to the garage use, you know, that's again, that we're talking about use and that was a, a different use relative to what you're proposing now. And again, it's just a matter of protocol of getting these items. I Getting these well, it, it, it's, it's giving the opportunity really to neighbors to object that it's a non-conforming. So I I also design houses and I submitted a project and thought it was the exact same thing. And yet the neighbors got all pissed off and threw fit. And God knows why. There was there was no change to the outside. Right. They were just mad and, mm. and they stopped the project. Um Aye. But it was the same, but they were given that opportunity and it wasn't the building wasn't conforming. So they had the right to anything being done to it. I see. 
So and it's they, just really, it's just like belt and suspenders kind of thing. We, we just need to you know, the paperwork to show that right. you've, it's just, it's just the, the criteria behind it to show that the application's complete. We've done our job. We reviewed it properly. Right. Gotcha. Okay. You know, I one, will, um, I will do my part. So I guess there's two paths to follow here. Either we can, um, you know, we can move on with the review of the application and, um, you know, potentially have a, a motion for approval pending that's the middle of the necessary items, or we just um, continue this one to the next hearing and they submit it all then. And that's pretty. I feel, I'm, I'm sorry to say, I feel like if that's a little more responsible, I think if Kim Keen were here, she would be objecting to us. Um, reviewing an incomplete i i she, she's the one that told me how to do it <laughs> yeah i know i'm sorry <laughs> she keeps us all on track and you know i think yeah i can hear her voice in the background right now <laughs> um with so we the planning board meets the second and fourth wednesday of each month uh the 11th yeah, the next hearing is on the 11th of January. There's only one one hearing in November and December, typically because of the holidays. Um, right. Would you be able to sleep at night if we continued the review of the application to the 11th? And in between now and then, you submit those items to Kim Keen? Yes, I will. I will do that. I will start this process tomorrow uh, with her, and then you know try and get those those emails or whatever is required to you or to her as soon as possible. Um, uh, and um, you know, well, I'll just do what needs to be done. Um, I, it, it's funny because she's the one that told me, no, this is you know this is not going to be a problem, and you know here's how you. Do the application these are the things you require and it should be you know smooth sailing so um and it's fine i mean i, I understand yeah and it's it's again it's really straightforward and it's just again you know the decision stands in perpetuality with the with the property so the you know the stronger you know, stronger legs we can stand on, the better, and the more information, the better. Um, right. And it's, you know, it's it's definitely value to your your client to do so. So I I would cast a vote for someone making a motion to continue this one until January 11th. Yeah. Um, uh, Tracy Keller, I make a motion to continue this to the date certain of January 11th, 2023. Meredith Randolph, I'll second that. All right, all those in favor, Tracy. Tracy Keller, aye. Meredith. Randolph, aye. Dave. Um, I'm not gonna be here the 11th, most likely. I'm, I may be on Zoom, but I may be traveling too. Okay. But, um, I agree. What's your, I agree. Okay. And uh, myself, Reluctantly. myself, William Hanley, I agree to. And um, so we've got, and Michael, just to also paint the picture, you know, we've got Gloria on the board. She's out sick tonight. Kim was out sick tonight. And if we need another alternate member, we still have Christy, we can pull in too. So finding a quorum unless, you know, you know, three of us can't be, I don't think is any issue. Uh -huh. All right. Well, welcome to the planning board process. Thank you. Sir. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for inviting me. This has been great. <laughs> No, really, I do appreciate you taking the time and uh, giving me the guidance that I need to to get this through. And um, and 
uh, it sounds like it's it's going to happen. I just got to fill in a couple of blanks. I think Kim must have seen it as so simple that she kind of over, she didn't give you enough directions because she just saw it as so simple. She probably just brushed it off a little too easily. It, it, right. Yeah. Yeah, but I, but I know she's kind of a stickler. Um, reputation is that she's, you know, pretty. Uh, uh, I was a, afraid of her, to tell you the truth, but she was great. That's good. Say that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, okay. So I don't want to take any more of your time. If I, if I'm all set, I'll just get on those things, and and we'll uh, here on the eleventh. Sounds good. Okay. okay. Thanks again, folks. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Those those are always tough ones. I mean, because we don't have like a clear checklist to march through. And you know, the non-conforming projects, we absolutely need to have the information submitted. So I agree. Yeah, we tr we clearly tried to push it through for him, but it just wasn't working. Yeah, I think it would just would have been a little bit thin, you know, to make a decision. CQD is keeping an eye on us, so that's what's. You know. yeah. <laughs> we're, we're being watched. Yeah. But uh, so you guys heard that the community school withdrew their, well, their, they were next on the agenda tonight and that didn't play out because they were not ready, I guess. So they're going on the January 11th um, agenda too. And uh, looking at the agenda, Next is other. Do we have any other to discuss? None heard. I would encourage anybody with any potential leads of um, potential candidates for the planning board to always, you know, work those angles if you got them. I've been uh, mentioning it to just about everybody I've run into. <laughs> And uh, other than that, other next item on the agenda is adjournment. I make a motion to adjourn. Dave Ashmore, second. All right. All those in favor, Meredith. And all five. Dave. Dave Ashmore, aye. Tracy. Tracy Keller, aye. Myself, William Manley, I drive safe home tonight. I mean, the roads were glazed, and so. All right, thank you. Drive careful, you guys. Good night. Yeah. Good luck. See ya. Thanks, Heidi.